Tales and Else Pets Spa. Today we are talking about part two. If you missed part one, it was about why I started my own business. Part two is how I started my own business. So if you haven't watched the previous video, it definitely gives you a little bit of background about me, what I went through and why I decided to actually get to this point of starting my own business. So let's get into part two today. So my parents proposed me starting my own business. Now seeing the stress my parents had to go through um, having their own business, I knew it was a big decision. So I actually took it upon myself to take a week or so to actually pray and think about it. In the end of the day, we all felt in our hearts that this is the right direction for me to go in. So let's get into the specifics now of starting your own business. Now that the backstory is kind of given, there are a few things you need to budget for. Obviously, I did not budget for these things. I jumped into it head first. And I do wish in a way that I could possibly have worked it out a little bit better. Um, but in the end of the day, it all worked out the way it should have. So number one, budget for training. If you are going into a business where you are going to have to provide a service, training is essential. Do not go into it with general knowledge. You will give bad service and clients will not return to your company, which is what you need, especially in the beginning. So I did my training at a place called Tailwaggers. I'll leave their full name down here for you guys and I'll link them in my description down below. They are a month training program now in South Africa. You don't get anything. Um, for, well, when I was looking, there was no way we can get a diploma or properly get trained to become a groomer. Um, there was, um, this was the only short course I could find where you can physically actually work with the animals. So I made my seven hour drive down to Kempton Park, Johannesburg, where the training was. Um, now this training was a day theory, uh, a week wash and dry, and then two weeks wash, dry and groom, which includes trimming, nail cutting and shaving. We learned specific styles like schnauzers and it wasn't a very in depth course at all it was all about how much effort you put in was the knowledge you would get out of it there were people supervising us all the way of course and while i was doing my course uh we started with the second thing you need to and that is registering your business now i'm located in a center any well-known center that i know of in south africa will need a registration number if you want to rent a shop out in the center so your business needs to be registered so i went through in a, um, my parents and my accountant and he actually went in through the whole process of registering my business and my name i wanted to be tails and owls dog spa but unfortunately the name that got accepted among i think we chose three or four to send in was the entails and else pet spa so in the end not too bad then after that obviously talking about shopping centers and renting you need to budget for is not only your at least three months rent ahead of time but as well as a deposit that you're going to have to put down on the shop that you're renting so we did not budget for the three months ahead of time we only budgeted on the shop's deposit and we also were looking for a little bit of a lower price but i want to be in a specific area which was hillcrest which is a little bit more of the upper class area we did look in other areas but we weren't satisfied eventually a agent phoned us saying that there are two shops available in hillcrest in the heritage center which is where i'm currently located and we took another step in faith in getting the shop in the end of the day i was very very satisfied um, not only did I have basically the shop name I wanted um, training as well as the perfect location for my dog parlor and thinking that I've got my own business my own little baby that I could grow was just it was very exciting for me I love challenges 
So, the fourth thing you need to budget for after the training, the registering of your business, as well as the shop's three months rent and the deposit is your equipment. So this also depends on what business or service you will be providing. For me, I need a lot of equipment. I did not realize how much I needed. When you are budgeting for equipment, over budget. There is always things that you are going to need that you did not know. Or the supplier might not come through and you will need to order from somewhere else. In my case, I was lucky enough that while I was actually doing my short course, we were introduced to a shop that sells only grooming equipment from all ranges from shampoos to muzzles to scissors to clippers to tables, bars, hair dryers, all of it. So I could order everything from one place and I knew that their quality was good because the place where we were training used their equipment as well. One of the biggest expenses that I knew I was going to have was cages. So when you are in a parlor, a lot of people see cages as this awful thing. It is extremely necessary for the safety of the dogs. Now, it is our responsibility as groomers to make sure that these cages are spacious enough to not house just one, but at least three dogs. I only have medium-sized cages and I've got a large cage. No, my large dogs I actually don't put in cages. I book them in separately when there are no other dogs around or only when there's a small dog that can get put in the waiting area in a very spacious cage. And this dog will be secured somewhere if I need to take that dog out and give it to the owner. I always work around safety. I am only one groomer in my shop. I do not have a washer or extra hands. So I make sure that I book my clients accordingly and responsibly. If I know the dog is not dog friendly, I make sure that there is no other dogs around when I'm grooming that dog. So it has no need to be put in a cage. Let's get back into it. Cages. I got them secondhand from someone that used to own a parlor. Luckily, he still had these cages. We got them, we repainted them, and they are perfect. I've got about nine, um, as well as a bath. I've got an amazing, amazing father with great woodworking skills. Um, my parents secured a normal bath, as you guys saw in my grooming videos, and built a frame forward that would support all sizes of dogs that I need to put in there. I've had St. Bernard's and uh, Great Danes in there and I've never had a problem. Um, and he also bought me my wonderful, wonderful blow drying table because they were supporting me through this whole process, not only financially but emotionally. So equipment, very important over budgets. And if you're lucky, get secondhand stuff. I mean, mine's been lasting for three years now, and I'm sure they can go another three. Then, last, and this is probably the most important out of all of it, and that is marketing. You need to market your business before it opens. You need to make sure you've got clients lined up before you open. Now, we only did it about a month ahead of time, uh, we did it over three platforms, so number one, and the one that worked the best for me was Facebook. We have a lot of Facebook communities that I was a part of. I went and advertised on all these communities. There I got the most um, clients, even till this day, most of my clients found me either from Googling or um, searching or seeing me on Facebook. Then I also used another advertising platform. Now this platform didn't bring me any clients that I know of so just keep an eye out when you do pay for someone to do your advertisement on uh, another social media page that is not very big or on their website which is what these people did. Um, it doesn't always work out very well so just maybe stick with um, your own personal advertising um, at first but it is something you can budget for because even though advertising on the Facebook page didn't cost us anything the pamphlets definitely did so there was an once again things working out perfectly a big special on printing bulk pamphlets um, 
I'm not sure where this company is. I could not remember their name. I don't have the invoice on me right now. Um, so I'm sorry I could not include it, but they printed me a very basic where am my number and my name pamphlets. And I just went for about a month and just sticking it into Carl's windshields. And I mean, I personally hate it when I come into my car and there's this piece of paper sticking out. But I did this. <laughs> And it worked, it really worked. I had so many people climbing up, taking their pamphlet, turning around and walking into my shop asking me for a price list. These are the things that you need to budget for when you are starting your own business. So how financially it went for my business when I started, and this is part three, which is the realities of being self-employed. If you guys like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Uh, if you like what I do, subscribe. I know, same old, same old. We're trying to hit a thousand subscribers. I'm very far from it now, but nothing is impossible. I mean, I thought starting my own business, working with animals every day, starting my own YouTube channel, my business actually surviving a pandemic. I don't think any of that would be possible, but here I am. So please guys, feel free if you want to watch more of my content subscribe and i'll see you guys next week